Hey guys, I hope all is well with everyone. Um, so, just so you're aware, this this reading wasn't next on the list. Um, I usually like to stay in order on a list. Um, I get backed up on a list because I have family to take care of. I have a house to take care of. I have an estate I'm trying to settle on. I have a house I'm trying to take all of the old stuff that my mom had brought in years ago and I've built over the years. I have a lot on my plate and not to mention I'm pregnant, currently about four months into it. So again, I have a lot on my plate. So patience is always appreciated. Also happy Halloween. So. Anyways, we're going to get through this one here. Is Paul Wesley dating Natalie Kuckenberg? Kuckenberg. Now, I couldn't get her birthday nor her zodiac sign. So, and this is a new deck too, but it's well shuffled. I will put the title of the deck in description box. Is Paul Wesley dating Natalie Guthenberg? Is Paul Wesley dating Natalie Guthenberg? Paul Wesley dating Natalie Guthenberg. Okay. So a few cards came out here. We're starting off with 15, number 15 of the Major Arcana which is a devil card. It says here at the bottom, habit and dependency. Um, but the devil card uh, represent has Capricorn energy. Um, but it can also represent bad habits. Um, also, chains, things that we're connected to. Um, can also be things that are not good for us too. After 15, we have 16. That's good. Um, sorry. But it says at the bottom, decadence, or sorry, yeah, decadence and abruption. This is interesting. Because now we have the Six of Pentacles, which it says generosity at the bottom, which it is a handout card. It's where you're receiving something. It could be a gift, too. But then we have the Five of Pentacles. It says poverty at the bottom, but it also represents being in the cold, out in the dark. Put yourself in that position. Because typically there's a key to the situation. And the three of cups here at the end. Socializing. Can represent um, drinking. Um, also celebration as well. And the third party too. Okay. At the bottom of the deck we have the three of swords. Which the three of swords represents pain. Um, and at the bottom it does say disappointment. It does represent disappointment as well. Um, sometimes heartache as well. Is Paul Wesley and Natalie Kuckenberg dating? 
Paul Wesley dating Natalie Kuckenberg. That's too many, sorry. It's Paul Wesley dating Natalie Kuckenberg. Okay. Out came the King of Swords. It says logic at the bottom, which does. The King of Swords is uh, very intelligent. Um, he makes the decisions of the castle. Um, swords represents mind um, and decisions. Um, but it also represents male energy with air sign energy and at the bottom of the deck this is really strange with this question I feel like uh, at the bottom of the deck we have the king of pentacles which the king of pentacles is somebody who is loyal um but it's also male energy with earth energy. Somebody who's also financially stable. Is Paul Wesley dating Nile Cookenberg? Is Paul Wesley dating Natalie Kuckenberg? Okay. Next we have the Seven of Swords, which the Seven of Swords represents deceit, something sneaky, treacherous. So the bottom of the deck, or bottom of it says treachery something sneaky but at the bottom of the deck we have the nine of cups here which means satisfaction wish fulfillment let's get another deck here can you tell us more here about what's going on the relationship between Paul Wesley and Natalie Kuckenberg, please. few too many. Paul Wesley and Natalie Cookenberg. There's that three of swords again. Heartache, pain. And at the bottom of the deck we have the eight of wands, which eight of wands represents um, a lot of movement. Can also represent a lot of communication too, a lot of action. can also represent messages too sometimes is Paul Wesley dating Natalie Kuckenberg here we have the sun card um the sun card does represent fire energy uh paul wesley is for sure fire energy um but is the happiest card in the deck 
in the major arcana so it's very happy um can at times represent child as well but um, i'm not feeling that in this reading i'm feeling more of the happiness energy it's describing which with the three of swords it's just painful feeling from the happiness like he had happiness but now it's too hard to find happiness now because he's feeling so much pain it's paul wesley dating natalie Kuckenberg. Page of Cups. So the Page of Cups represents um, water energy. Also represents um, dreams, like daydreaming, uh, things that you want to create in life. It's like the beginning process. Before you physically start on something, you're daydreaming about it. And here at the bottom of the deck, we have our Five of Pentacles again. Out in the dark. Out in the cold. Is Paul Wesley dating Natalie Kuckenberg? It's a few too many, but I'll take it. Because usually when I don't, it winds up coming out slowly anyways. So here we have our Ace of Wands. Our Ace of Wands represents a new creation. Sometimes a male phallic symbol as well. Um, it has fire energy behind it too. So it looks like here it has to do with something he wants to create. Because we also have the Page of Cups. Which is like the step before. Then we have the Three of Pentacles, which um, has that Earth energy in it. Also, the third party is where you're going to somebody else or somebody else is coming to you for help with this project or something new. This Two of Swords can represent confusion. Um... Also making blind decisions, too. It has air energy in it. And then here we have our Eight of Wands again. Fire energy with a lot of communication or a lot of action. A lot of things going on, coming towards. Can also represent messages as well. And here we have our four of wands again, fire energy can represent um, soulmate because we have our 11, 11. Um, it can represent also coming home, um, happiness. And here we have our page of wands, which represents fire energy, but it's the page where you're ready to venture off. It's pretty interesting because we started out with that Ace of Wands and here now we have that Page of Wands. There's like nothing relationship-wise coming up, like union. It looks like there's more of heartache of... How do you put it? Like wanting to create this happiness, but there's a little, there's some disappointment, and possibly heartache, pain, going through some type of emotional issue here with not achieving this happiness, but then there's daydream about a new creation with a third party. But it's confusing. Making decisions. And last card here. We have our Ace of Cups. Which Ace of Cups represent new love. 
that could be what is being created here because it's been dreamt of. It's like going showing the stages here. And then here we have our three of cups at the bottom of the deck. And then we have our seven of swords. Let's keep going here. One more. Huh. That's a little weird. Because here we have our ace of cups, right? And then when we got to the bottom of the deck, we had our three of cups, water energy, celebrating, uh, can represent drinking, socializing as well. Uh, then we were back at the seven of swords again, which the seven of swords represent deceit, treachery, um, sneaky, um, something that's also not known to. And then we have the hanged man, which the hanged man is hanging like that because trying to see things from another perspective, from another angle, trying to understand things. And then we have our tower card, which represents the birth of energy or crisis, um, type of disaster. But it looks like it's going to be mastered here with the eight of coins, the eight of pentacles, earth energy, um, but it's where you're mastering and perfecting that seven of pentacles, the seeds you planted. Let's see what we have at the top of the deck here. Eight of cups, the death card, and the hermit. Okay. So here with the eight of cups, it, your, it's your quest, your journey in life, okay? Uh, transformation and with it breaking free from everything it's like growing from what you've been through your experiences because then we have our death card here uh, closing one door to open up another one to continue on this journey this quest um, and the hermit card thinking alone to himself about this transformation of closing the door and opening up another one. So, I don't know anything about their relationship besides this here. So, you tell me what you collect from this. Because to me, it's, it doesn't seem like they're dating. But there's... There can be some type of socializing, but I don't think dating because we don't have A, the two of cups, nor B, the lovers for sure, so. All right. I feel like my ass needs to. If you're enjoying so far, please hit that like button. If you'd like to see more in the future, hit the subscribe. Can you describe Paul Wesley's future relationship? Can you describe Paul Wesley's future relationship, please? Wesley's future relationship. The Seven of Pentacles. Seven of Cups. Seven, seven. Magical number there. Synchrosity. Uh, spiritual number. So the Seven of Pentacles represents work. It's where you're planting the seeds um, to see growth. You're, you're waiting for growth and then you obtain go growth and then you go from there which Therefore, then you're, you proceed on to the Eight of Pentacles. And then here we have the Seven of Cups. Which is usually something you got to work on. It's like a project. At the bottom of the deck here we have our Six of Cups. Which the Six of Cups represents 
excuse me, um, things are nostalgic, uh, memories, the past, mm, sorry, I had something sweet, pregnant, and it makes me burp, um, can also be something from childhood, like very nostalgic maybe. Paul Wesley's future relationship, please. Can you describe Paul Wesley's future relationship? Future relationship, Paul Wesley. Can you describe Paul Wesley's future relationship? Move these guys up. So here we're starting off with the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords represents the knight that um, comes in with uh, news. Um, can also bring something in for ideas. It says idealism at the bottom here. Also has the Gemini sign too, which it does have the air sign or air uh, energy into it because of the swords. But Gemini has two sides. It's the twins, male energy and female energy. Followed by the Knight of Wands. That's interesting. The Knight of Wands is the knight that is charging ahead. Charging forward. It's the fastest knight in the deck. And here we have our four swords, which it says it repose at the bottom. Um, but it also represents like nailing the coffin. You know, like laying things to rest. Um, can also represent healing. Another four. Four of Pentacles says greed at the bottom, but it can also represent holding on to something very tightly. We have another seven, three sevens. Three represents something creative. The seven of wands represents, it says bravery at the bottom, but it also represents challenge. Like trying to defeat this one thing. And then our last card here is the five of swords. It says defeat at the end, or at the bottom of the deck, which Five of Swords, you are going through something to defeat something. But the Five of Swords also can be like mental stress. Let's see what's at the bottom of the deck. We have the Page of Swords. So it says inspection at the bottom. Uh, it also represents like spy, spying, somebody watching from afar. Um, let's see what's behind the page. The hermit. The hermit is where you're sitting and thinking to oneself. Let's see what's at the top of the deck here. Two of cups, ten of swords. High Priestess, one more, the Eight of Cups. So our Two of Cups here represents relationship, um, a union, something that is, is something between two people. Then we have our Ten of Swords, finality, it says, um, it also represents making decisions. And 
And then here we have our high priestess. Our high priestess represents secret knowledge, um, mystery. And then we have our Eight of Cups, which is the quest, the journey that you're on, um, breaking free and transforming. So it looks like he's kind of going through something. Um, he might try to, he might keep his, at least try to keep his future relationship on the DL. To be honest, I can't blame him, right? But it looks like he's going to try to keep it on the download because of challenges and things from the past. It's like learning from the past. Why doesn't Paul Wesley's relationships last very long? Why doesn't Paul Wesley's relationships last very long. So we have the moon card, the devil card again, and the ten of cups. It's almost like, because the, let me do the cards first and then I'll say it the other way. Uh, the moon, it has Pisces energy. Um, also, he is on the cusp of uh, cancer. Um, so... The moon card represents um, unknown, things in the dark, um, pretty much something that's kept to oneself. And not too many people know who, whoever comes close, like a uh, close relationship. Um, the devil's card represents, Cap it has Capricorn energy, but can represent um, addiction. Um, it can represent, not saying it's addiction, but, uh, sex, uh, like, evil tempting things. That's, and then we have our ten of cups, which represent happiness. And sometimes family, too. bottom of the deck we have the king of wands Paul is Leo on the cusp of cancer and we have the emperor hmm I wonder if this fire energy comes out and shows temper Why doesn't Paul Wesley's relationships last very long? We have the Hermit card. Again, it's where you're thinking to yourself. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Two of Pentacles. Where the Two of Pentacles, you're balancing things out.
Why doesn't Paul Wesley's relationships last long? Starting off with the Ace of Swords here. So the Swords represents uh, the mind, also represents the being an Ace of Swords, it can represent truth. Um, also, new action, um, but with intellect behind it, intelligence. And it's something new. It's like changing something in, in life. Page of Wands, which represents the adventure, adventuring on. You're ready to adventure. The Three of Cups, socializing with water energy. Can also be celebration um, and drinking. And then we have the Judgment card, something being reborn, rebirth, uh, revived, an opportunity. The Five of Cups, regret, um, loss, can also represent sorrow, um, seeing something that's been spilled. The Three of Pentacles. Another three. Um, three of Pentacles represents going to a third party or third, somebody else coming to you. And then we have our Eight of Cups, which represents the journey that one is on, breaking free and transforming to continue on to the journey. The High Priestess, which is secret. So, it's almost like there's a new type of action that he's taken that is secret, but he goes to somebody else. To a third party. I don't know if he has a, a drinking problem or a socializing problem, but. It really looks like here that there's some issue here with a third party that's been revived. And it becomes a loss in some other department. Because now, you know, pentacles. Here are the other two cards here that came out. The Ten of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles. The Ten of Swords can be where you're making a decision, a final decision. Uh, or that yeah, decision has been made. Um, can also be where you're also not paying attention to things and swords like things are coming at you, stabbing in the back. Um, then the nine of pentacles though represent reward. You're achieving what, like a reward from what you were trying to master from the seven of pentacles and eight of pentacles. But at the bottom of the deck, we have the Seven of Swords. Something sneaky. There's something secretive here. Five of Pentacles in the dark, very much so. So on the top of the deck, we got the Eight of Wands, the Three of Wands, Two of Swords, and Two of Pentacles. So the Eight of Wands can represent messages, can also represent um, a lot of action, a lot of communication. And then we have our Three of Wands, which 
can represent patience because you are sitting there and waiting to see results. Like in majority tarot cards, um, is somebody sitting there and waiting and watching from afar. And then here with our two of swords, it's like a blind decision. You're unsure of which route to take, which decision to make. Because one side you see is is clearly happy for sure. But the other side, ooh, I'm sorry, you don't really know for sure for 100%. But there's balance coming. There's flexibility um, with the two of pentacles. So whichever route he decides, it looks like it's. There's something being revived that stops them or that messes things up. And with the hermit, it's almost like he's trying to reflect on things as well. Why doesn't Paul Wesley's professional life or his career doesn't last long? Why doesn't Paul Wesley's professional life last long? Why doesn't Paul Wesley's professional life last long? These guys like to throw out a chunk first. The Two of Pentacles, flexibility, balancing things out, has the earth energy. Um, so there can also be healing involved with the Pentacles too, because you do have the symbol of healing. I believe it's Hermes. Um, the Queen of Cups here is female energy, uh, water sign. The Queen of Cups is known to be honest. She's good at expressing her emotions. The Eight of Swords um, it says imprisonment at the bottom, which the Eight of Swords does represent um, being bound. Can also represent self sabotage. Um, Seven of Pentacles, progress, which also represents work. You're placing the seeds in, you're planting it to see uh, something come from it. So then we have the Justice card, which ju Justice represents, um, has the Libra energy, also represents um, balancing out the scales. Can also be law, uh, law stuff or like not IRS, but like you know, some type of higher up. It's weird. The King of Swords is male energy, air sign. Now, the King of Swords can sometimes represent law. It's interesting that it came out with the Justice card. Um. But it also represents like deciding, making decisions, like a big decisions, log or that you need a lot of logic and wisdom and you know, thinking very precise about it. And here we have the Hierophant card which represent um morals, uh religion, um commitment, tradition, 
marriage. And at the bottom of the deck, we have the strength card, which does has it does have Leo energy. Also represents a cycle with the eight, um, but obtaining like courage uh, can also represent a mount, like it is something that's very strong. Hmm. Okay, so from drawing four from the top of the deck here. We have we're starting off with the temperance, which is moderation. You're balancing things out carefully so um, things don't become too much. The Five of Cups, which represent regret, loss, can also see something being spilled, like realization of something. And then here we have the Lover's card, which has the Gemini energy, um, but represents lovers like um a union that coincides very well and here we have the ace of wands which is like a new creation so it seems like his with what what i drew from the top it seems like it, when he starts a relationship, it kind of like interferes with a, um, with with his work life. It seems almost as though he's trying to spend more time like logically with probably family Oops. sorry I keep moving the camera let me fix it I don't want you guys to see that horrible shit over there I'm trying to clean out the basement it's another thing on the to do list we just got our second 15 yard roll off dumpster alright Paul Wesley's relationship with Ian and Nina. Paul Wesley's relationship with Ian and Nina, please. Okay, so we're starting off with the Six of Swords, which represents detachment, also moving away, moving on, traveling away. The King of Pentacles. King of Pentacles um, could possibly represent Nina. Um, doesn't have to be male because everybody has the male and female energy, yin and yang. Um, so the King of Pentacles has the male energy. Um, and with the earth sign with pentacles, so it's also very loyal person, the king of pentacles, um, is financially very well, knows how to, to use money very well, like spend and how to gain. Uh, six of wands, it represents, um, victory, success, sometimes even coming home. The King of Wands, okay. The King of Wands uh, is probably going to be Paul Wesley here. Either Paul Wesley or Ian, because Ian is Sagittarius. So let's keep going and see what we got here. The King of Wands can also represent leadership. The Emperor, 
the Aries energy. Um, it can also represent authority, um, control. It can at times represent temper, um, father figure as well. The Knight of Wands, which is the fastest knight in the deck, is the knight that comes charging. Oops, sorry. The Fool card is the most optimistic card in the deck. Is the new beginning, um, jumping off the cliff to go into what you want to do. The Two of Swords, confusing time where you want to make a decision. But at times it's like a blindfold decision. And at the bottom of the deck, there's the Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords represent deceit, um, something sneaky. Hmm. The relationship between Paul Wesley and Ian and Nina. Here's that Seven of Swords, and then behind there is the Five of Pentacles, and the Empress. Wow, you guys. Holy shnikes. Trying to figure out where I can put that. Alright, so here we have our Seven of Swords, which represents deceit, um, treachery, uh, sneaky, something that people don't know about. But something that's going on. The Five of Pentacles is in the dark. You're placed outside, out in the cold. No communication from the inside. And then we have the Empress card, which represents it's the it's kind of interesting. We got the Emperor and the Empress. So, with that coming out, this empress is the partner to the emperor. Empress represents mother figure, and the emperor represents father figure. Now, of course, not always, but can also represent, like, it's a perfect pair. Having the empress and the emperor. The Empress can also rep represent creativity, growing something. And then at the bottom of the deck here we have the Four of Swords, which it represents like rust, laying, like putting nails in a coffin, the lay something to rest. Sometimes healing too. Nine of Wands behind it. The Nine of Wands represent sometimes, like, determination. Okay. So, I drew four from the top of the deck, and we got the Judgment card. Three of Wands, the Four of Pentacles, and the Eight of Cups. The Judgment card is like rebirth, something that's been revived or being revived. And then there's Three of Wands where you're usually sitting on one side and watching from afar, watching for results to come in from afar. And then we have the Pen Four of Pentacles where you're holding on tight to something. It's hard to let go. And we have the Eight of Cups, which is our the journey card. Hmm. Breaking free, you know, transition. So it looks like there's holding on to some type of hope here. But there's 
a charge towards a new beginning as well. But there's something sneaky about it too. Hmm. All right, you guys, if you have enjoyed, please hit that like button. If you'd like to see more in the future, please hit the subscribe. An hour long and I have to get up at 6.30 in the morning. Um, until next time, you guys, I'll feed the same. Bye-bye.